We're OK, thanks. OK, so the demo that I'm going to show here is uh, going to show you different ways of working with aerial LiDAR uh, in ArcGIS. And so the goal is to give you some ideas for how you can maximize the use of your LiDAR files, how to manage it, perform analytics with it, and then also extract information from it. So for many of users that already have LiDAR data, uh, the end goal is to create derivative products from the point clouds. And so here are some examples that I'm showing on the screen with um, building footprints that can be extracted from the classified aerial LiDAR. Another type of derivative is elevation products. And so here I'm toggling between the digital terrain model, representing the ground surface, and the digital surface model, which is, uh, shows everything above ground. And so once you have those building footprint outlines and combine that with the various point return information from the LiDAR data, we can get a really nice 3D representation of the buildings along with their roof forms, the roof form types with very accurate height measurements. So we can use that and model an entire city, both of structures and vegetation, as you can see here. But before we even get started with that, um, to generate some of these products we need to and perform analytics, we need to organize and manage the data, uh, the raw last files. And so ArcGIS Pro is the tool for this. So in Pro, we can work directly with the last file, as you were just seeing on the screen, or we can work with a large collection of last files into a data model we call a last data set. And you can see here with each red square representing the single last file. So creating a last data set is pretty straightforward. I right click a folder, name it, and then I can uh, go to the properties of that last data set. I can choose a coordinate system. And then I can navigate to the last files on disk. I simply select the ones that I want part of my last data set. And then I can add those. And I can see other statistical information um, about the last files themselves. So once I've got that, I can drag it right in to the map. Now I can see those red squares. So as I zoom in, I can now start to see the points displayed currently as height values. But from the ribbon in Pro, I can view the class code, I can view a return type, intensity, or I can also view these symbolized as a surface value. I'll choose um, points classified as um, uh, classification codes. And so you can see right now it's displayed in gray, and I'm just showing. Um, what's available, which is only unassigned points. So now that we've uh, got those points in the map, we can start the classification process. And so in this demo, I'm going to walk through all the different steps that you might take to classify your data. So the first tool I'm going to run is a tool called Classify Overlap. And so overlap with LiDAR data is really the duplication of points over from the overlapping flight lines. And so you, we can see that those, as I run the tool, those overlapping points are displayed in purple. We can actually strip out those points when we begin to create elevation products. And the reason we would want to do that is because it's going to result in much smoother uh, surfaces when we create these DTMs or DSMs. So I filtered out those overlapping points. And now I'm going to run another tool to classify the ground. And so there's uh, some method methods that are more rigorous than others. And the method you choose really depends on the complexity of the terrain. So I ran it once. You can see the ground points are now displayed in brown with a class code of two. I can rerun and reuse some of the same tools if I want. So now I've got my ground, my ground points. And I can query out and look at just the ground points from the ribbon, or I could look at all the points. So next what I'm gonna do is classify the buildings. And so in this demo, um, you may have to be aware of the rooftop height, the average point spacing, and the minimum area of, of the buildings. So I've ran one, um, you can see it's not perfect, 
and that's okay. I'm going to go back and run another tool to, to correct some of the points that I may have missed. So the next tool is going to be the classify by height tool. And so many organizations uh, may need to classify the vegetation. And so what I'm doing here is choosing class code 3, 4, and 5, which represent um, low, medium, and high vegetation. And then I'm also classifying the noise. So anything below one foot or greater than 100 feet will be classified as low and high noise. And so then I can remove those noise values again from the points. And then so as I start to create some of these derivative products, that's going to eliminate or remove those um, to create a better surface. A lot of organizations already have their existing GIS features. You can actually use those features as input into the classification process. So here I've got buildings. I'm going to use those and classify the points that I missed earlier from uh, the building tool as inputs. And then so as I run that tool using those features, I'll classify this class code 6, which represents buildings. And now as I zoom in, you can really see I got a nice uh, classified set of points uh, that represent the uh, buildings. OK, so once we've done that, we can query just those buildings that I classified. And if we want to uh, look at this in 3D, um, this is a, a great way to uh, visualize some of the points that we may have missed. So we can see the ground points um, not so bad in this intersection. Vegetation looks pretty good. Uh, ground looks pretty good. Um, I'll just zoom to a couple of areas. Uh, you can see we have sort of a, a dome-shaped building uh, that we've classified. And that looks pretty good. Uh, another area here. This is a median um, with a split between two lanes. And there's trees growing in the middle of the median. So you can see we can classify those pretty good. Here's an area. Um, um, over two bridge decks, and you can see that the process classified the bridge decks as ground. And so when we go to create a digital terrain model, it's going to include those points unless we change those. So we have a manual classification step in Pro that lets you physically select the points and then change uh, the classific classification code uh, for those. So here I'm just selecting the points. I'm changing them to class code 17, uh, which represents uh, bridge decks. And now when we go to create additional terrain products, it's going to factor that in. So with just a few steps, you can see we've got, um, I would say, a usable uh, point cloud that we can use to start generating uh, derivatives. OK, so now what I'll do um, is switch back to the 2D. And I'm going to start to create some elevation products. So I'll first start with a digital terrain model. Um, I'm only going to display class code 2 for ground points and only last return. And so this is going to ensure that the points used to generate the surface are all true ground points. So I'll run a tool called um, generate raster from last data set. I can search for that in the geoprocessing window. I'm just going to use the default values for now because it's uh, the quickest one. Give it a name. Probably change the sampling value uh, to 3 meters. And then hit Run. And so I've generated my digital terrain model. I'm now going to use a raster function to generate a hillshade representation of the ground surface. So I'll search for hillshade. Again, I'll just use some of the default values here. And now I've created an on-the-fly, in-memory product of a surface representing the ground values. And so you can see in that area there where I reclassified the bridge deck, those now um, are, are excluded into the ground surface. I've already ran the digital surface model, or all the points above ground, so I'm just toggling that on just so you can see what that might look like. OK, so those are the steps to uh, some of the steps or uh, ways that you can generate a um, some elevation 
products. So now what I want to do in the next demo is show you how you can actually generate realistic 3D buildings over an entire city. So the first requirement is they actually have building footprints. So there's a lot of uh, building footprint content that's already out there. Here's, here's an example of uh, the city of Aspen's open GIS website. You can go in, it's freely downloadable. So I always recommend um, looking at open GIS sites around the world. Another um, uh, area you can get building footprints, you may have seen this in the news, is Microsoft created over 125 million building footprints using uh, machine learning. And they've made this publicly available. It's free to download. Um, our content team at Esri has actually taken all of the building footprints and made them freely available in ArcGIS Online. So here's an area, an example in, in LA. Um, in addition to that, if you don't want to use ours, we've provided all the steps um, that uh, that show you how to actually take the Microsoft building footprints, convert them over your area of interest, and then and then start using them in ArcGIS. But if you don't have access to that, there's going to be many times you're going to have to create your own footprints, and so we have a workflow for that. Um, and we have basically two workflows, one that lets you work with classified points and one that lets you work with unclassified points. So when you download the tools, what you get are a set of um, uh, geoprocessing tools. They're uh, listed basically one through five or one through six, and you just go through each step along the way and generate um, the results. So here's an example of the classified workflow. I've got classified um, points. I ran it through the first few steps. I get sort of a rough outline of the building footprint. But as we go through the steps, we can refine that a little bit more. So here's here's the raster that's generated. And then here's the generalized building. So you can see as we go through the steps, we start to get a, a better uh, building outline. Um, similarly, the unclassified workflow goes through a series of steps. And again, so this is if you're working with purely unclassified data. Uh, the first step is to generate a raster. And so here's the raster as we turn that on. Uh, if I turn on the world imagery base map, you can see there's a lot of noise and pixels that we may not want. But as part of the steps, you'll go through and clean this up. And then what you get is a, kind of a nice refined um, estimation of the building footprint. So we can take that result take the 3D information from the LiDAR data and start to generate 3D models. <clears throat> so what I want to show is actually a web application that compares um, the results from running those two different methodologies. And so the panel or the map on the left is the results from running uh, the classified point cloud workflow. The panel on the middle shows the results from the unclassified workflow. And then the panel on the right is a set of building footprints that was generated from um, an aerial provider, I think in this case, Sanborn. And I'm not sure exactly what methodology they used. Um, I'm just using that as a way to compare um, two different methodologies against something you might find from a vendor. So once you have building footprints, um, I recommend going to solutions.arcgis.com. We have a set of templates. This one's called the Local Government uh, 3D Base Map Template. It's a series of tasks and tools in ArcGIS Pro that let you take your LiDAR data and your building footprint outline and actually generate realistic 3D models of an entire city. And it also um, has tools in there for generating the roof form so you can see the shape of the roof. We can then take that information and push that directly to ArcGIS Online. And we have a new uh, 3D um, indexing spec called I3S that allows you to take any 3D content that you generate and serve it out over the web. And you can see it's very performant. And it looks great. And finally, another template that I would recommend on the solutions page is this proposed development um, solutions template. And what this allows you to do is take 
different types of um, scenarios, 3D content over a city or an area of interest, and to do before and after development um, visualization. That way you can kind of see what one might look like. And then finally, um, our Esri Professional Services Group um, can be hired to actually generate some of these 3D building models over an area of interest. So this is um, an example of one we did uh, for Dade County in Miami. And you can see the accuracy and the detail of the buildings, um, pretty impressive. Okay, uh, that's gonna conclude my demo. Uh, Steve, I uh, will turn it back over to you.